welcome to another edition of Building the ELR and in today's edition we're going to be unboxing a Class 68 TPE livery. Woo! Yeah, epic. And today we have another person with us. This is Lizzie. Hi. She is going to be helping me unbox that absolute beast and I can't wait. This is my favourite loco ever and I cannot wait. Okay, let's get to it. Right, let's crack on. This uh, Dapo Class 68 diesel electric locomotive, double O gauge, nice shiny box. And it is a pretty good box, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, out of all the manufacturers, I would say that's quite a sturdy box, one of the better ones. Anyone who's got a Dapo locomotive, you know. Right, on the side, we have a label. On the bottom, we have nothing, and on the sides, and on the top, we have this CAD design of the locomotive that's inside. Standard box for a DAPO. And I don't really care about the box. I want to know what's inside it. Do you want to know what's inside it? No. Oh dear. <laughs> good start! <laughs> Bloody good start! Right. We have, yeah, papers, instructions, guarantees, other things. Always for the paperwork. <laughs> anyway, before we get into that. Well, you've got a repair warranty. I've got a repair warranty, that's brilliant. You've got a guide, DCC guide. Yes. And owner's guide. Yes. There we go, that's what we've got inside. Brilliant. She is so good. Right. Let's get to the nitty gritty. What's <laughs> underneath this piece of lovely oh. foam? Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god. Yes, this beautiful piece of equipment in here. Little blister pack. Thank you. And just pull out and remove the box. And then, right. and then we have polystyrene, plastic, and it's a sleeve inside a blister. Blister inside a sleeve thing. Slide that out. And we have a little bag that has some bits, some pipes and what look like balances for the front. And then open the blister pack and there she is. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. Right, the throat. Now we've got two little plastic things that go underneath the bogies. I'm assuming that's to help it sit properly in the blister pack and definitely not needed while running. Now, what do you think of that? That is an absolutely amazingly beautiful model. So now it's out of its box, let's have a, a, a nice look at this livery. I mean, look at that. It is absolutely stunning. I have got to say, this this Class 68, in, in DRS livery, it just doesn't do anything for me. It just it just looks like another loco, but in TPE livery, it, I don't know, it just pops out at me. And I, I, I just think this is absolutely stunning. And that's just the livery. The local itself is absolutely phenomenal. The detail that they've gone to to actually make this local look realistic is is just something else. Even down to the disc brakes, and then all the all the stickers that are literally everywhere. So many of them. The only thing I can say that's not great about this is the sticker. With the Transpennine Express on one side, it's actually 
pretty well done. Yeah. But on the other side, you've got a bit missing where it's not transpired properly, transferred properly even. Um, so you've got a bit of spelling missing. Um, there's a couple of vents where yeah, it's I noticed not... Yeah, I that. The very corners of the vents yeah. are dented. Yeah, exactly. But to be fair, though, you wouldn't see the vents if you were... Unless you were, like, literally an inch away from the, from the vehicle looking extremely carefully at it. But the Transpennine Express logo being missing there, that, that's something I'm going to have to take up with the, the company I bought it from. Yeah. Um, I am absolutely petrified that they're out of stock of these and I'm not going to be able to get another one. And that is my biggest worry, yeah, to be fair. That would be a downfall at the end of the day. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if they've not got one in, then, then what are they going to do? That worries me. So um, now it's like we send it back and then get a new one. It's, poss it. it's possible that Paul have spare sh shells and would replace the shell. Um, I don't know. Didn't but it is, it is such a shame that it's happened because it is yeah. such a nice livery. And I've seen loads of these all over the Facebook groups and nobody's had a problem that I've seen with one of these yet. And it's just my luck, isn't it? Yep. Right, yeah. Anyway, on, on to some of the detail. Let's have a look at some of the detail. Right, we have sprung buffers. Mm. Yeah, I got that out, didn't I? Sprung buffers. And I didn't <laughs> screw it up. Um, we have sprung buffers. A lot of people like sprung buffers, some people don't care. I actually really like them. I think it's a detail that, you know, when you're coupling up and you're doing some close up shots of it, it looks good. And they've provided you with all the piping on one end. And on the other end, you're going to put that in itself on the other end of the vehicle you have some of the piping but you've also got um one of the small d couplers um these can be problematic but we'll see how it rolls with them anyway we'll get tired of it but again spun buffers on this end we have some fans on the roof uh i don't think they move they don't look like they move anyway no, they're stuck. They look pretty stuck there, don't they? Yeah. We'll find out in part two when we run it, but yeah. Um, going to the sides of the vehicle, on the detail side of things, we have the two big vents, two small vents, and then something inside that one, which I think is really, because it's quite a far way in, inside as well, whatever it is. Looks like a handle of some kind or something. I don't know, but it looks epic. Um... The door detail, the stickers are all in the right place, everything looks straight. And the, the crispness of the transfer, you can see the crispness of the line. There's, there's just no overspray anywhere. It's, it is absolutely perfect. Yeah, but that, that's rare. You don't see that. The crispness of the livery transfer is really, really, really good on this. There's no overspray anywhere. Every line is bloody perfect. And perfectly painted as well. Yeah. They haven't it, the ones screwed up. up. Yeah. yeah, these fine lines here, the bang on. You, you you can't. The detail work in that yeah. is phenomenal. You know, what I mean, that's that's really good painting. That yeah. really good. What else do you say about it? such a absolutely stunningly beautiful logo? What else can you say about it? I mean, it is. I mean, like. Take. It's even got wind, just go wind, just go I know, off. I noticed that. That is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, the railings on here, like proper fine precision. I mean, like, it's probably plastic, but either way. And they then, stand out. They're yeah, not the windscreen wipers, on. like, yeah. The glass is nice. I like all the glazing on it. The glazing looks good. It's quite a weighty model as well, isn't it? That's just some, yeah. Oh, in fact, I have a feel like that. There's some wait in that. It's like you're about to pick up a um, dumbbell. I know. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be capable of pulling some weight yeah. because it's so heavy. It'll give it so much track adherence that it can pull anything. I mean, yeah. we're not running traction tyres on this. There's no way. No, steel wheels yeah. all the way. So, yeah, that, you know, that's going to be the It's going to be with um, great discs on that. Oh, yeah, I'll well, cut that in. They're stunning, them, aren't they? It's the little details like that that just make it. That's what makes yeah, it. Yeah, you've it's always the little details that make a train. Definitely. Right. The reason I want to talk about this coupler and the fact that it's a small sprung 
decoupler. This local in this livery only ever pulls a Raker Mark 5s with a dummy 